Hello and how's it going? Welcome to the channel and I'm here for a ranking video for you guys. Now I technically already did do a ranking for this band before on my channel, but that was a while back and also since then my uh, ranking has kind of updated, I guess. And this ranking will be for the band Iron Maiden, who is one of the greatest metal bands of the 1980s and I'd say they're an essential metal band. I mean, if you call yourself a metal uh, a metal fan or a metalhead, haven't listened to Iron Maiden yet, you really got to do yourself the favor to check out these guys. So, yeah, definitely a great band. So I thought it'd be interesting to, once again, uh, rank their discography from worst to best. Uh, before I do begin, though, I would like to give a shout out to Jamie Horsley. He's a new subscriber of mine, and he uploads uh, really good videos as well. So go check out his channel. Um, he's also done ranking videos, and yeah, he's a really cool dude, and uh, uh, he does a really good job at what he does, so uh, Jamie Horsley, keep up the good work, man. Uh, glad you've been uh, liking the content on this channel as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with this Iron Maiden ranking. So at the bottom, as my least favorite, I gotta go with Virtual Eleven. Never really been the biggest fan of this album, and I know there's a lot of people that have this close to the bottom, if not at the bottom of their ranking. This is, of course, the second album and the last album with Blaze on vocals whenever Bruce left for a bit. But yeah, to be honest, there's only really two songs that I think are good off this album, and the rest are just either bad or average at best. But the two songs that I do like are Future Real and The Klansman. I think these are actually pretty good songs. Some of uh, Blaze Bailey's best songs with Iron Maiden, I'd say, especially the Future Real song. I mean, that song is just, it's really good, actually, really good opening track. Um, but this album does have The Angel and the Gambler, which I think is their worst song, especially with that repetitive chorus. Don't you think I could, I mean, no, no, stop. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of moments in this album that also kind of uh, make you have this face like, what am I listening to? You know, like it's kind of cringy at times, but yeah, not the biggest fan of this album. It's decent though. Like it's not like awful, like it's just trash or anything. It's just okay at best, but I, it's got to be at the bottom for me. So next up in my ranking, The Final Frontier. Now I know this album does have, you know, its fair share of fans, I know there's some people that really like this album, some people that don't like it. With me, I'm more in the middle. I think, it, like with Virtual Eleven, it's an okay album, except it's a little bit better, obviously. But, I mean, there is some good stuff on here, like the title track, Coming Home, and When the Wild Wind Blows. I think these are pretty solid tracks. But my main problem with this album is the fact that it lacks memorable tracks, especially in the middle parts of the album. I honestly don't remember much of the middle parts of this album like yeah it just lacks memorable tracks and the album is also a little too proggy i think now if you guys know me well enough i do love progressive metal it is one of my favorite subgenres of metal but with iron maiden it doesn't really work for them i feel like and this album is a good example of what not to do with uh when you uh, experiment more with prog and whatnot but Decent album, but it's just far from one of their best. Next, we got A Matter of Life and Death, and yeah, it's a, it's a good album, but again, it's just not one of their best. Um, I know there's a lot of people that actually really dig this album. I know that, I know a few people that actually really love this album. I mean, as far to say that they think it's, you know, some of their best work, which for the life of me, I can't understand why. I'm, I'm sorry, guys, but... I mean, still, it's a good album, but I just, it's, I don't think it's one of their best. I mean, it does have songs like Different World, These Colors Don't Run, and For the Greater Good of God, which I think are good songs, but I mean, overall, some, a lot of the songs are kind of boring, I guess you could say, and yeah, um, that's kind of my thoughts on the album. It's an okay album, though. I, I don't think it's all bad, though. Next, we got No Prayer for the Dying, and I know that some people would, you know, maybe give me some flack for putting this album above A Matter of Life and Death in the Final Frontier, but this album is not as bad as some people make it out to be, to be honest. Now, sure, it's still not one of their best, but 
I think it's, you know, pretty good for what it is. But yeah, the production, not the greatest, but it does have some good songs though. Uh, Tail Gunner, Title Track, Holy Smoke, Run Silent, Run Deep. These are actually pretty good songs, so yeah. Um, it's a pretty decent album. Next, we got an album that I personally think is super overhyped and overrated. I know I'll probably get looks for putting this album rather low on my uh, ranking, but here we go. Next up, we got The Book of Souls, the most recent Iron Maiden album. I'll never understand the hype with this album. I never will. Now, I've heard some people say that, you know, the only reason that this song gets so much praise and hype is just because of Empire of the Clouds, which is the closing track. And I think it's a good song, but it's it's a song that really does overstay its welcome. And to be honest, I don't think that even that song is anything uh, worth writing home about, I guess you could say. I mean, I don't think that song is even as great as some people uh, make it sound. Oh, Zach, but it's epic. It's an epic song. It was at first listen, but really after years later, after listening to it, is it really still epic today? I don't think so. I don't think it's, it's just one of those songs that really overstay their welcome. I've heard some people say this is one of the greatest Maiden songs, which is just stop, please stop. <laughs> I mean, no, absolutely not. There is some good stuff on here though, like the lead single, Speed of Light, pretty good. But I would say that the title track is actually my favorite song on the album. I, I think that's one of the best songs of their modern era, to be honest. Uh, Death or Glory is a pretty good song too, but yeah, The Book of Souls, um, not as great as a lot of people make it sound, but it's still a good album though. I mean, it's not that I hate the album, I just think it's overhyped, you know? And like with The Final Frontier, um, some of the songs do lack memorable tracks. Sure, the musicianship is good and whatnot, but it does lack memorable songs, I hate to say it. But I would say that this is a step up from The Final Frontier for sure. So if they just keep getting better uh, from this point on, then the next album will probably even be better than The Book of Souls, but we'll have to see, of course. But yeah, good album, but just again, not one of my favorites. Next up, we got Dance of Death, which I know I might get looks for putting this album above The Book of Souls. I've actually seen some people say that this is the weakest of the modern era of Iron Maiden, you know, the era with Bruce being back and whatnot, but honestly, the I think the only reason that people have this at the bottom is just because of the album cover. I mean, it's got a pretty crappy album cover. I know a lot of people like to uh, diss on the album cover, but I mean, just listen to the songs. Listen to the songs themselves. The songs themselves are actually pretty darn good. Um, now, there's some songs that I, you know, are skippable, but there's some really good songs on here. Of course, like No More Lies, the title track, and Passion Dale. These are really good songs. Uh, but I also think that Face in the Sand and Age of Innocence are pretty underrated songs. Uh, these are songs that don't really get a whole lot of attention. I think they're really good songs, though, but yeah. Dance of Death, it's a pretty good album. Kind of underrated, too. Um, doesn't really get that much uh, attention from fans. Sure, it's not one of their best, but it's still a very solid album still. Okay, so next up, The X Factor. Now, once again, I might get some looks for putting this album above The Book of Souls, but I don't know. I think this album is, again, another one of their more underrated albums. Of course, the first album with Blaze on vocals. It's a very dark sounding album and I just really like the vibe and uh, sound that you get with this album. A lot of great songs on here like Sign of the Cross, Lord of the Flies, Man on the Edge, uh, 2AM, Edge of Darkness, The Unbeliever. These are all really great songs. And you also got Judgment of Heaven which I think is one of the most underrated Iron Maiden songs. But yeah, The X Factor, it's a good album. Sure, it's not one of their best, but I still think it's good. I think it's actually better than uh, some people make it out to be. But yeah, if you didn't like this album at first, please give it another chance. You never know, it might surprise you. So there you have it. Next, once again, I might get some <laughs> flack for putting this album where it is on my ranking. But now we do get into the 80s material of Iron Maiden. This is where we start getting into their classic stuff. But next up, I got to go with killers of course the second album from iron maiden and the last album with paul on vocals um 
if you ask me, this is the weakest uh, 80s Iron Maiden album, which I know is a rather unpopular opinion because this is a fan favorite. I mean, I can understand why, but I mean, I hate to say it, but there is some songs on here that, you know, are not that memorable. I mean, it's not as memorable as the debut album, in my opinion, but yeah, it's a good album, but it is kind of overrated, in my opinion, but there is some good stuff on here. Uh, I mean, you got um, the title track and Prodigal Son. Uh, these two songs in particular, uh, really great. I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff on here. I mean, like I said, it's not my favorite Iron Maiden album. I don't think it's one of their best, but it is a good album still. So next, once again, I might get some looks for putting this album where it is on my ranking. I know this is also a fan favorite, but next up, we got The Number of the Beast. Like with The Book of Souls, I just think this album is overrated. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that have this either at number one or in the top three, which I I personally don't understand why. Sure, it's a good album, but I think the only reason that people, you know, praise this album to no end is just because, you know, it's the first album with Bruce on vocals, you know, the first album with their main vocalist or whatever but I mean the songs themselves they're good but it's I think Maiden has done better than this I, I do think that I mean there is some good stuff on here like The Prisoner which is maybe my favorite song on the album and of course everyone knows the title track Run to the Hills and Hallowed Be Thy Name which are good songs but yeah um it's hard to say what my favorite uh song is of you know the singles or the fan favorites but I don't know, I think Run to the Hills is pretty catchy though, but yeah, um, it's a good album, uh, but I do think it is overrated. I mean, I would put it in an overrated metal album list if if I ever uh, made one, if I haven't done that already, of course, but good album, but yeah. Now I might get some looks for putting this album above The Number of the Beast, Book of Souls, A Matter of Life and Death, Killers, and all those albums, but next up we got Fear of the Dark, and I know that this album definitely has its fair share of fans and also its fair share of haters. I know there's some people that don't like this album. I personally really like this album. I do think it is probably the best of their uh, 90s material. Now, sometimes I do go back and forth between this album and The X Factor being the best of their 90s work, but overall, I do got to go with this album because... I mean, it's pretty solid, though. It's kind of underrated. Um, it's also got a pretty dark sound to it. I mean, the album definitely sounds better when you listen to it at night. I mean, I know from experience, of course. Um, it just sounds better when you listen to it at nighttime. It's like one of those albums, I guess. But there is some good stuff on here. Be Quick or Be Dead, From Here to Eternity, Afraid to Shoot Strangers, Wasting Love, the title track, and... Another song on here that I think is really good, but also underrated, is Chains of Misery. That's a really good song, but yeah, there's a lot of solid stuff on this album. So, Fear of the Dark. Uh, next, we got the debut album, Iron Maiden. Um, now, I know it's kind of an unpopular opinion to prefer the debut over Killers when it comes to the Paul era. But for me, the debut album is just a little more memorable for me. I just return to this one a lot more than uh, Killers. And yeah, it's a pretty solid album, I'd say. Um, I mean, you got Remember Tomorrow, Running Free, Phantom of the Opera, um, and Iron Maiden, you know, the song Iron Maiden. Definitely great stuff. I mean, definitely a solid album, really good debut album. Uh, definitely worth checking out if you haven't checked it out already. Next in the ranking, Peace of Mind. And I think this album is also kind of underrated, just a little bit though. And the reason I say that is because this album did get sandwiched in between two very big Iron Maiden albums, Number of the Beast and Power Slave. So I think because of that, this album kind of is in that forgotten category. But I think a lot of people still, you know, give some recognition to this album. I know it might also be unpopular to prefer this album over The Number of the Beast, but hey, it is what it is. Um, I just return to this album more, to be honest. There's a lot of great songs on here, like Where Eagles Dare. I really like the guitar work in that song. 
Revelations is also great. Uh, maybe one of my favorite Iron Maiden tracks, Die With Your Boots On, really great song. It's also got The Trooper, of course, uh, one of their biggest songs, but solid album and definitely a classic. Okay, just a few more to go. So next up, we're at the fourth one in my ranking. Now, I'm really shocked that I have this album where it is on my ranking because, well, I don't think there, I never really expected there would ever be a time where I would have this really high in my ranking, in my Iron Maiden ranking, but hey, it is where it is right now. I'm, of course, talking about Brave New World, which I think is the best of their modern material. Pretty underrated album, in my opinion. Um, definitely a solid album and easily, easily the best of their modern era. Uh, since Bruce's return, of course, and one of the best comeback albums of all time. I mean, you got great songs on here. The Wicker Man, Ghost of the Navigator, Title Track, Blood Brothers, Mercenary, uh, Out of the Silent Planet. These are all great songs. I mean, there's not a single weak song on this album, in, in my opinion, but some songs are obviously better than others. But what a solid album this is. Definitely great stuff. Now we're in the top three, so at number three, Somewhere in Time. Definitely a great album, also kind of, to an extent, underrated. Um, not totally underrated, but just kind of, but yeah. Great album, though. Um, this was actually my second Iron Maiden album that I heard. Great album, though. I mean, you got Caught Somewhere in Time, Sea of Madness, uh, Stranger in a Strange Land, Alexander the Great. These are great songs. Wasted Years is pretty cool, too. Now, yeah, I, I think that song is kind of overrated since I know it is, you know, a single, a fan favorite, but I do think it's overrated. But not bad, though. But, yeah, great album for sure. Definitely has pretty strong replay value for the most part. Next up, Power Slave. And this was actually my first Iron Maiden album, the first one that I've ever uh, listened to and bought and all that, but... Great album, definitely a classic. Um, really, I don't think you can go wrong with any of the songs on this album. Back in the Village is maybe the weakest song on the album, but even that one's still good. But some of my favorites would have to be Two Minutes to Midnight, Flash of the Blade, Title Track, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. I mean, these are all great songs. Ace is High is a good song too, but I do think that one is a little overplayed, to be honest. I think I've listened to that one a little too much. It's one of those songs where I'm just like, mm, it's good, but I just, I don't care if I ever hear it again. But yeah, I would say out of all the singles, I'd say Two, uh, Two Minutes to Midnight is my favorite. I really love that song. Maybe another one of my favorite Iron Maiden songs. I don't know. But Power Slave is definitely a great album, though. Definitely one of their best. But now we're at number one. So at number one, you guys know what's left at this point. Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Now, like I said about The Final Frontier and how Iron Maiden should not experiment with Prague, with this album, they've experimented with Prague in the correct way. This is a pretty proggy album, to be honest. I mean, it is, uh, it's really great, though. I really like the, um, you know, just the overall sound of this album, you know. It's really great. Once again, you can't go wrong with any of the songs on this album, but some highlights for me, at least, would be Can I Play With Madness? The Evil That Men Do, the title track, and Clairvoyant. Definitely great songs, but definitely a strong album. Maybe one of the best metal albums of all time. I don't know, but yeah, it's a concept album, of course, and it's really great. I, I really dig this one. Can't go wrong with this album. If you haven't if you have not checked out this album, please check out this album. You're missing out. So Seventh Son of a Seventh Son at number one. And it's my favorite Iron Maiden album. Well, there you have it. That is my ranking for the Iron Maiden discography. Let me know what you guys think. How would you guys rank the Iron Maiden discography? Feel free to let me know in the comments. So on that note, thanks for watching. Have a nice day and take care.